It's just so overwhelming, isn't it? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know to make this work in the most humane way possible. So yeah, let's get started. Here inside of Unity, I'm going to start off with my bow and arrow project that I made some changes to. And if you haven't checked it out, I suggest you do so by clicking this link here. So let me just show you what we can do right now. So the bow follow the direction of our mouse and if I press the shift key, it will launch an arrow and we can launch as many arrows as we want. What we want to do here is to make the predicted path of the arrows before actually shooting them. Alright, so let me explain a few things before we dive any deeper into this. So here is the arrow which will be launched in the air. So normally if we want to launch something, we give it some initial velocity and we launch it from some point. So let's say this is the starting position and, and this V is for the velocity. And we know both of these things. So if we launch it and it then flies in the air and falls somewhere after a while because of the gravity. And we know all these things. But we want to know here is the predicted path that it follows before actually launching the arrow. And we will use these points here that will show us the predicted path. But the question here is how do we do it? So this is where physics comes in. So we will use the trajectory formula given by I don't know who. Let's just say by a professor from Money Heist because he's smart. So shall we? So professor says that if we know the start position and the initial velocity considering the gravity as constant and assuming there is no drag then we can calculate the path and the landing position of this arrow here using this formula. Easy enough right? So yeah let's see if it actually works. Alright the first thing we need to do is to make a tiny change in our shooting script. So here instead of applying the force to the arrow, we will give it some initial velocity. So let's change this and type in velocity and we will set this equal to the direction. So which will be the transform dot right. And we will multiply it by some force. So let's just multiply it with launch force here, which will actually be the speed. Alright, so now let's save this and head back inside of Unity. And here we will first set the launch force. Let's set it to 20. And now let's hit start. So yeah, everything's working just fine. Let's exit play mode. So now let's go to our bow script, script to set the actual trajectory path. So here we need a few variables first. A game object reference for the point that will make the trajectory path. And a array of game objects that will constitute the actual path of the trajectory. And a number of points that we want to place. Uh, well, let's first then the name to point prefab here to avoid any confusion. So now let's make an integer for number of points. Alright, so now in the start method. So here we will get, create a new array of game object. So let's see. And given the number of points as the size here. Alright now let's make a for loop which will start from 0 and end at the number of points here. And here for each point we'll, we will instantiate a new point and assign it to the points there. At the transform third position. And for the rotation, let's just type in quaternion.identity because we don't want any rotation on this. And now we can just calculate the position of each point at certain period of time. 
so let's go down and make a uh, another method here of type vector2 and we will call this point position and here let's make a float for the time and now inside of this we will make a vector2 to store the current position of the point so let's call this current position Alright, so according to the professor's formula, we need a start position. So for that, we will type in transform dot position and plus the velocity, which will be the direction multiplied direction. Let's first normalize it. Dot normalized, and we will multiply this by some speed. So for that, we will just type in force, and now we will multiply it with time. And let's just put them inside a bracket and we also need to cast this as vector2 to perform the operations alright now let's add the half at square meaning 0 0.5 and for the acceleration let's just type we can just type in the value of gravity or we can type in physics 2d dot gravity which will give us the gravity of our game And now we have to multiply it with time square. So let's first get the time square. We will just multiply t by itself. Alright, so that's basically all for the formula. So let's just return this value here. So we will just return this current position. And now using this formula, we can calculate the point of each position on the path. So let's go inside of the update method. And because we have the points in an array, so let's we will use the for loop to set the positions of each point. So points dot length. And for each point here, we will get the we will set the transform dot position of each point. So points i transform dot position and we will just set it equal to whatever value that we get from the points position method and here we will need to give in some time value and for that we will multiply the index of each of the points so we will put i here and we will multiply it with some amount of time so i will put in 0 0.1 and of course you can play around with this value if you want to but i will just leave it at 0 0.1 f Alright, so let's save this and head back inside of Unity. First, we need to create this point here. So let's create a circular sprite. And let's drag and drop this inside of the hierarchy. And let's rename this to point. And we will just scale it down a bit. I'll set the scale to 0.5 x and y all right and i'll change the color to red and let's just make a prefab out of this and delete this from the scene here all right so now we can just drag and drop this point inside of this slot here and it will just fill this whole area here now set the number to something like 20 you can set it to more or less if you want to. Now let's try this out. Awesome, the path is now displayed and the arrow follows the exact same path. Cool, let's try to increase the number of points here. And let's change it to around 30. And let's try this out. Cool, now we have a complete path here and the arrow follows it perfectly. So yeah, that's how you can create a simple path prediction system. Also, the points are filling up the whole hierarchy here. It would be better if you just have them instantiated in some empty game object as child instead. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, which I'm sure you definitely have. So leave them down in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for professor sites. Come on guys. And until next time, see ya.